Hi, my name is Kmot. This podcast is brought to you by Majuba TVET College and specifically raised to financial accounting and five for South African TVET colleges. In this presentation, I want to focus on branches as contained in module two of your financial accounting and five textbook. I'd like to tackle branch stock account and for the purpose of this exercise, I've selected the question paper which was written on the 22nd of November 2016. I quickly want us to go through the requirement. Question 2.1.1 required candidates to prepare the general ledger of the head office pertaining to the branch stock. That's the given information. Let's see how we're going to use the given information to prepare the branch stock. Quickly need to uh, emphasize the fact that uh, you clearly need to distinguish uh, items that will impact the branch stock as not every transaction will impact the branch stock. For the purpose of this illustration, that is the preparation of the branch stock, I'd like to use the Excel spreadsheet. For ease of reverence, I'd like to refer to the general ledger as a T account. At this stage of your studies, you should know what a T account is. Just a quick recap on fundamental principles in preparing any T account. A T account should have a debit side and a credit side. A T account specifically relating to an asset, remember branch stock is an asset. A T account specifically relating to an asset um, would communicate any decrease in an asset. In this case, if there was a, 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 a decrease in stock, it will be communicated on the credit side. If there was any increase in stock, it will be communicated on the debit side. Just to give a quick example, if a branch acquired stock, the transaction relating to the acquisition of stock by the branch will be communicated on the debit side as it increases stock. If uh, the branch, on the other hand, was to dispose or sell stock, the transaction will be communicated by placing a credit on the branch stock. The last uh, principles that I'd like to emphasize before we go to the actual information is that a balance is pertaining to opening a balance of uh, assets, accounts, will always be reflected to the debit side and the closing balance will always be reflected on the credit side. To emphasize branch stock mm -hmm. is an asset, therefore its opening balance will be taken to the debit side and the closing balance will be taken to the credit side. I just quickly want us to go to the information and see how it fits into the picture. The first item relates to opening balance of stock it will definitely affect the branch stock i'm gonna take it to the debit side so it's a copy and paste exercise i'm going to take it to the debit side remember this relates to the opening balance i'm going to call it balance to distinguish it from the uh, closing balance we're going to call it balance brought down So in this current financial year, we would know that that relates to the balance, to the opening balance. The next transaction online is the closing balance. We know for certain is the closing balance because it specifically relates to stock on hand on the 29th of February 2016. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it to the credit side. There you go. To clearly distinguish between the balance, opening balance, and the closing balance, we're going to call that balance carried down. There you go. You realize at this stage that I didn't put any uh, amounts on those cells. However, it was, it was a, a predetermined formula. And um, as you would know that this is a balance, balance sheet item, it will have a balance that will be transferred to the balance sheet. 
that amount must always be i quickly want to highlight it in green for ease of reference that amount must always be equal to that amount okay moving along swiftly let's go tackle the next transaction as per the given information the next transaction relates to the cash in bank it doesn't affect uh, the branch stock uh, cash in bank it also doesn't affect uh, the branch stock there's two transactions that relates to the branch bank as sundry debtors the same logic applies except that this relates to branch debtors that transaction I want to talk about that transaction. That transaction relates to goods received from head office. Um, head office, in this case, uh, sent stock to branch. When there's an exchange of uh, stock between the head office and the branch, we communicate that exchange in a form of T accounts using the account referred to as goods to branch, which represents the head office and branch stock. That transaction will result in an increase in stock, branch uh, stock. Therefore, it will be taken to the debit side. I quickly want to take it to the debit side. Remember, we're going to debit branch stock. Remember the important principle in accounting, the double entry system for every debit as a credit. Therefore, the contra account, as I've mentioned, will be goods to branch this is how we should communicate this we have actually debited the account called branch stock and the credit will be taken to an account called goods to branch yes we had to place a debit because a branch stock is increasing by uh, the transfer from the head office the next item in line is returns to head office. Yes, it affects the branch stock as it relates to stock that has been returned by the branch to the head office. Remember, this is reducing the branch stock. I'm going to take the 280 because it's reducing the branch stock. I'm going to take it to the credit side. It's important to emphasize the fact that this is an exchange of stock between the head office and the branch therefore we're gonna use the two accounts one called branch stock and goods to branch therefore the contra account will be goods to branch moving along swiftly let's tackle the next transaction the next transaction relates to cash sales uh, both the sales transactions being cash sales and credit sales will lead to a decrease in stock remember it's a decrease in stock because we, we we disposing stock the branch is selling the stock therefore the stock will decrease and uh, consequently uh, the bank will also increase on, on on the debit side but in this case i don't want to confuse you let's limit it to the branch stock the branch stock will decrease a decrease will be taken to the credit side of the branch stock i'm going to copy remember it reflects a decrease in stock the contra account because it relates to cash sales it will be branch bank The next item still relates to your sales, which will also decrease stock and it will be reflected on the debit side or on the credit side of the branch stock is the amount relating to uh, branch debtors. I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to put it there. Remember, our stock is decreasing. However, the contra account will be branch debtors because we sold on credit 
Moving along swiftly, let's see whether there are any other transactions that uh, impact uh, preparation of the branch stock. Discount to customers doesn't affect branch stock. Returns from customers, it certainly affects uh, branch stock. But remember, this is not an exchange of stock between head office and the branch, but it's an exchange of stock between the branch and its customers. Remember, these are returns. Therefore, stock will increase as a result of goods being returned by the customers of the branch. I'm going to take the 240 to the debit side. And this contra account will be branch debtors. Let's assume that the goods that have been returned were actually sold on credit. Therefore, debtors will, will decrease by 240. If you go to your debtors T account, you'll realize that it will be credited by an amount of 240. In this case, our stock is increasing by uh, 240. Is there any other item that affects branch stock? Let's quickly go through the transactions. Cash received? No, it doesn't. All those items do not affect the branch stock. Let's go complete the branch stock. Now we need to get the sum of the credit side. Let's quickly get the sum of the credit side. There you go. Now we're going to compare it with the sum of the uh, debit side. As you can see, it doesn't balance. It's an important concept to balance the account. In accounting, for us to balance the account, we're simply going to take that amount and we're going to deduct all those amounts. So I'm just going to cut it short quickly. There you go. So essentially what we did, we took the 20. 5,000 of the credit side and we deducted the total of the debit side because the, the two balances at the end of the day must be the same. There you go. There you go. Since the credit side, remember, if your sales in this case, remember, that was your sales. There was the sales as well. If your sales is greater than your, your cost of sales, then the resulting figure will be a profit. So this amount will be taken to a T account called branch profit and loss, where we're going to calculate the total uh, profit and loss relating to... Um, the branch so this is more like the gross profit if you like however the contra account that is being utilized it's called the branch profit and loss we're going to take this amount to the profit and loss and i'd like to emphasize that this is a profit amount in this case, we are not required to calculate the balance as it was provided. So the balancing figure related to the profit, to the branch profit and loss, which in this case, it's a profit. Um, I just quickly see if there's any other thing that I didn't discuss. Okay, that's the mark allocation. It could be different for different assessors, but specifically for that question, there was the mark allocation. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, thank you. If you've got questions, please post them on my cell number via WhatsApp or you can use the email address.